mashing up Shakespeare with Star Wars, why do you think it works? It's, it falls into that like classic uh, Shakespearean style, uh, like really well of like your Shakespearean epics, where you have some funny side characters going on over here, uh, pretty straightforward, grand scale uh, story with also like little bits of personal internal drama and character growth. It just kind of like lines up perfectly with a lot of the shows, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly how Trent said a lot of the characters kind of coincide with each other from Shakespeare and Star Wars. And it's it's cool to see it in uh, this perspective just mashed together. And it's I think it's a brilliant mashup. There's a... Go, go ahead, Olivia. There, it, it's just the, there's a, a similar through line of having high and low characters and high and low, like high drama and low comedy that happens in, in both of them. So it's easy to kind of, to make that hybrid work really, really well because when you've got one set of characters who are like kings and emperors and princesses who are having these huge dramatic things and people's limbs are getting chopped off and then you've got ridiculous little like Ewoks and, and stuff and, and there's, it's just, it's fun. Or you get Jar Jar doing some fantastic speech, some existential crisis, a la Hamlet, which is freaking phenomenal. And also, there's lots of pop culture references littered throughout these pieces, which is pretty dope. I think it's important to note just how um, how quotable all these films are. Um, not only Star Wars, but looking at things like uh, Mean Girls. I mean these quotes are just so embedded in our zeitgeist or whatever. And so then to take them and, and put them into uh, a, a, a language that is, that seems so, so serious to, to a lot of um, lay people nowadays, I think is, is part of the fun. There's also another thing I just thought of, which was um, that there are so many like, so uh, like just like subtle moments where whenever in Star Wars there'd be a line or a look what's really great about this is it 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 expands and turns those into a soliloquy and so you get these grand epic speeches from s tiny characters too like I think I think we were all taken aback and just or not not taken aback we, we were all uh, amazed by 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 Jeff's space worm which really just did just did amazing stuff with such a with such a minor character, you know. It was really, just little things like that are just wow, chef's kiss, just perfect. Well, and Star Wars itself is it's referred to as a space opera, um, and I think with that terminology, they, there is like like you were saying, it leaves space for these moments to happen. And so when you leave space, then it's easy to take it into a different context or a different linguistic style and fill in the blanks. So it doesn't feel like anything strange is being added to it. Like there's no out of character moments per se. It's really just building on top of what we already have with Star Wars. Yeah, I think to me, there's two things that make this work. One is kind of what everybody was talking about in terms of the writing. Ian Dosher has done amazing things by transcribing these into Shakespeare. It's the pop culture references. It's the random soliloquies that R2-D2 and Jar Jar Banks and every single creature that doesn't actually talk ever in the movies have during this, on top of the fact that he added in beautiful songs um, that we've seen time and time again, such as when Chewbacca accompanied Princess Leia after Han Solo was frozen in carbonite. Truly one of the best moments of our recording, but that's the reason number two that I think it works is it's all these people. Seriously, because it's so, it, it's the text. We've got the text, you know, and everybody would, it's performed in Shakespeare or Cyrano, which is kind of the half and half of this, of this group that we've now formed together. Um, we know that the text is there as a good jumping off point, but once it kind of comes to life is when it all starts to work, you know? So that's the credit that I give to all of, all of these guys is that they just make it work and make it hilarious and make it, just click along every single week. So I think that that's how you marry the two and that's why it works so well.
obviously, like people that are watching this, if you haven't seen any of our videos yet, please look us up. Watch, watch from the beginning, and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. I mean, we start very simply and then just kind of spiral out from there. So it's definitely worth watching in the original release order of Star Wars. I have to put that out there because there's people that would watch it like one, two, three. Nah. We got to watch it as the books were written, essentially, in this case. Um, and then we have our Facebook page that you can follow us on too. That way you can stay up to date on everything. Um, so it's Zunes, Z-O-U-N-D-S. So Zunes, <laughs> online productions. Um, that way you can follow us and have a good time.